Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, the president just finished speaking, as you saw, in Huntington, West Virginia. The big news, that state's Democratic governor, Jim Justice, announced he is switching parties and becoming a Republican. That means half uh, of the country's, more than half, two-thirds of the country's governors are now Republican. Good news for the Trump administration, otherwise a tough day for them in Washington. We're going to show you part of what the president said in West Virginia in just a minute. But first, we are joined by Charles Krauthammer. He's a writer and columnist to assess what that just meant. Charles, thanks a lot for coming on. Pleasure. What do you take from that speech? Well, the content was not impressive. It was highlights. It was the greatest hits. But I think this is a very important demonstration to the country, to the political elites, to the press, which he doesn't particularly like that he has his army. Look, you have to look at this in context. Here's a guy whose numbers are down in the 30s. He's got this uh, grand jury, reports of a grand jury being convened. He's got the walls kind of closing in on him in Washington. And here he's going out into the country and saying, these are my people. These are real people. Forget about the numbers. Forget about the chatter in Washington. Forget about the stories about Russia, which he spent a lot of time on, but I represent a huge constituency of tremendous support and enthusiasm. Now, admittedly, this is one state where he, he won the biggest victory of all, but there are other states. And his address was to the Midwest, the place where he won the election. He wasn't very specific on policy, but he said, I'm bringing you guys back. I'm the only one who listened. You were abandoned. That's his appeal. That's how he won the election. And he's reminding the elites that that appeal is still there. Watching this, I kept thinking, you know, he's been in office been nine months since he got elected. From the very first day, people were saying, we're going to take him out. Now this investigation looks like it has the potential to do that. If that were to happen, some of these voters might conclude that they're not really allowed to pick their own president. Well, that's why I think we're really headed into very choppy and dangerous constitutional waters. We know what the Democrats want to do. They want to get control of the House, and on day one, they're going to start impeachment. Now, I happen to think, as you know, I opposed the Trump uh, candidacy. I don't think he's very well fit for the presidency. But fitness is not a reason for impeachment and removal. High crimes are. Uh, here we have, we have a prosecutor looking for high crimes. With Watergate, you started with a crime, and then you try to find out right. how it happened. Here, they're looking for a crime. Perhaps they'll find one, I don't know. As of yet, I haven't heard of one. Collusion is unseemly, but it ain't a crime. So you've got a political establishment, mostly Democratic, but there are some Republicans who would like to see him taken out of office. I think that would be a catastrophic mistake. It would cause a rupture in the country where people would say, when we people, the ones who've been abandoned, elect somebody we like, our guy gets taken out, I thought we had yeah. a stable democracy. Again, I think he's unfit, but that's not the grounds for removal. Yes, it's and not I'm the point. Hoping, I mean, this will tell people it's a fake democracy. It's not but, real. But, but what it means is, if you think a man is unfit, you vote against him. Right. But you don't remove him from office. And that's where I'm afraid we are headed given the yep. forces that are surrounding the president. I just hope that cooler heads prevail. There will be another election. There always are. People can make their choices. I think this appearance that he did in West Virginia tonight is a way of saying, my numbers may be down, but I command a formidable army. So for our viewers who didn't catch any of the president's speech, here's part of what he said just a minute ago. Our agenda rises above left or right. It's an agenda for all of the people, especially for the tens of millions of forgotten Americans. They're not so forgotten anymore, I will tell you. You proved that. You proved it. They're not forgotten anymore. The Russia story is a total fabrication. It's just an excuse for the greatest loss in the history of American politics. That's all it is. It just makes them feel better when they have nothing else to talk about. 
What the prosecutors should be looking at are Hillary Clinton's 33,000 deleted emails. Most people know there were no Russians in our campaign. There never were. We didn't win because of Russia. We won because of you. That I can tell you. We won because we totally outworked the other side. We won because millions of patriotic Americans voted to take back their country. Have you seen any Russians in West Virginia or Ohio or Pennsylvania? Are there any Russians here tonight? Any Russians? So there he is talking about the campaign, and people say, oh, Trump, he never stops talking about the campaign. Maybe true. But it's also true that there are a lot of people who still, to this day, have not accepted the election results. I mean, that's real. The danger here, the pity here, is that we're still dis discussing the legitimacy of an election of a president six months in. That is never healthy for a democracy. No. It's happened to other democracies where you end up with the removal of the head of state. It's happened in France and other places where you get generations of the rump electorate that has its candidate taken away, resenting and not accepting the legitimacy of the country. This has never happened to us. And that's why I hope people will tread carefully. The way that Trump said this whole speech was Russia closing in on me in Washington versus you, the people. That's how he set it up. He's very good at this. And what he's saying is they want to take away the victory you won, meaning the people of West Virginia, people of Michigan, people of Wisconsin. And I think we should be treading very carefully here. This is what we are we're sort of sleepwalking into this. When you appoint a special prosecutor, you start in Whitewater, you end up with a blue dress eight years later. That's right. the, 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 this is an investigation in search of a crime. Show me the crime. I'm open to empirical evidence. If they show it, I'll be open to say, well, maybe this ought to be prosecuted. But as of now, it is something that's closing in, and it is very dangerous. I don't think people appreciate how dangerous it is for the stability of the most stable democracy in the world, a quarter of a millennium. Right. We, we shouldn't be treading these waters. We have a truly reckless ruling class, and that's on display now. Charles, thank you very much.